Okay, we'll then get started. Um, first off, I'd like to thank everybody for showing up after the debacle from uh, last week in the snow day and my initial email saying, yes, we're definitely having it, and then one at 3.30 saying, no, we are not having it. So people being able to reschedule, um, you know, Tom Corey was really upset when I said we're having it today with the opening day of the Red Sox, um, but they went down, they're losing 9-6 last time we checked. Uh, no comments, Joe. Uh, Our $200 million pitcher. <laughs> Uh, but, but we are going to be going around with introductions just so everybody can see the magnitude of the collective collaboration that's involved in this room. Uh, my name is Christian McCluskey. I'm the Youth Services Coordinator for the City of Fall River and also the Grant Manager for the Shannon and Safe and Successful Youth Initiative. Uh, t tonight we're going to talk about our overall youth violence prevention strategy, uh, highlighting the different state grants that are coming down through the city and the impact that they're having. Um, th then we're going to have an opportunity for questions and answers as well as how you can get involved and what are our next steps in uh, the highlight in uh, the apex of the evening tonight will be our annual Heroes of Peace Award. So I will, um, once again, Christian McCluskey, Youth Services Coordinator. Hi, I'm Michaela Dagny hetzler I'm the Fall River Youth Bounds Prevention Coordinator through the uh, Shannon Grant and I'm also a School Adjustment Counselor at Diamond Regional High School. My name is Bruno Ventura with the Bristol County Sheriff's Office. We represent the Drug Court, the Juvenile Drug Court, and, and Bedford, Florida, and Taunton. Uh, I'm the Family Outreach Coordinator. And I'm Pam Talbot. I'm the coordinator of the Juvenile Drug Court in Bristol County, and I work for the Sheriff's Office in Bristol County. I'm Paul Schmidt, State Representative, 8th Bristol District, uh, and a very uh, active supporter, as uh, are my colleagues, uh, for uh, the Shannon Grants and SSY. I'm Susan Correa, Assistant Magistrate, Bristol County Juvenile Court. My main office lately has been up in town. Alan Sylvia, State Representative, Fall River. Brian Gafkin, uh, Supervisor for the Region 8 uh, Massachusetts State Law Office. Village to raise a child. Um, so we'll be hearing that theme tonight in, in the all youth development activities that we do throughout the community. And with that, I will turn it over to Michaela to provide an overview of our initiative. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. This is more than we expected, which is always a great problem to have. Um, the first thing I just kind of want to quickly review with you, which you can see in your handout, um, is, our, is our mission for Fall River Youth Violence Prevention. The Fall River Youth Violence Prevention Initiative is a collaboration of dedicated partners focused on empowering the community at large to become involved in the reduction and ultimate prevention of youth violence in Fall River. Its mission is based on the philosophy that no one program, organization, grant, or approach can solve the problem of violence. Only a collaborative expansion of various violence prevention efforts will enable Fall River to move closer to achieving that shared vision of peace for which every community strives. And that really is the mission of why we are all in this room here today. Um, our model, our pillar model, um, further demonstrates that point. Uh, these are the main stakeholders we feel are at the table that can really truly uh, make follow re violence prevention efforts come to come to the peak it needs to be. Um, certainly, we want to build on on all of these pillars, um, but yet, you know, if, if one falls, we're still holding it up strong. So those are all the stakeholders involved, and again, we need to continue expanding all of them. Um, the adopted follow re youth violence prevention principles are as follows. Um, we adopted these recently during a strategic planning session, and those are that violence is preventable. Violence prevention is the responsibility of every individual. Violence prevention requires collaboration and multidisciplinary approaches. Violence prevention partners need to honor what works as well as recognize what does not. Violence prevention partners need to respect and celebrate diversity. And violence prevention is an ongoing effort. So in order to sort of understand um, the Fall Over Youth Violence Prevention umbrella, we do fall under the Greater Fall Over Partners for a Healthier Community. We are one of their task forces. And through this task force, we have five subcommittees. Those five subcommittees um, are up here. Our, our steering committee meets four times a year. We oversee the overall work being done by, by Fall River Youth Violence Prevention, uh, whether it be giving input to the grants that are involved, uh, input to the events and activities that we host. Overall, we'll oversee everything. Our events committee is responsible for the different events we have. 
Um, I'm sure many of you, well, how many of you were at the Youth and Candidate Forum we had in October? We had, it was an amazing event. Um, we're looking forward to planning more exciting events like that, but that was one example of an event um, planned by us, but we, we had um, a, a panel of eight youth on the stage who shared their personal stories of struggle, the struggles they've had growing up in Fall River. And we heard everything from you know gang violence to uh, foster family living to um, LGBTQ issues, to, and the, the range, and these kids were at a lot of courage and a lot of strength. And they sat there and they made the 20 plus candidates who are running for mayor and school committee and city council listen to them. And it was outstanding. And at the end, they got a pledge from each of those candidates of what they would do if they won for these kids. And we've made some of them follow through on those things and we're still hounding some of them. So again, it was, it was a really nice event and we have the Peace by Peace Summit coming up, which I know we'll get to talk about a little bit later. So just some of the events we're doing. Our Confronting Discrimination group is run by Jay Wong from United Neighbors. Um, they've had some amazing presentations really tackling some specific um, issues the youth are facing and doing some really great conversations and presentations from the youth um, and from other um, adult representatives in the community. So it, it's a really great um, opportunity to take part in. Our school community partnership, um, I'm really proud of how far this has come along. Uh, we meet once a month. And it's a, a different group of uh, school and community representatives. And we take time to not only have some networking and really work with one another and discuss the issues our kids are facing in the city, but we provide a training once a month. So we provided various trainings this year, suicide prevention, self-harm, LGBTQ issues. Uh, we, we have a, more to come. And um, it, it's been tremendous. And a lot of the growth um, a lot of the growth and consistency has been great. Special thank you to Diamond Regional High School because they're our new home. Tom Oven was able to secure um, room 251 and the culinary arts program and helping us out every month. And I think the beautiful atmosphere and food has definitely helped with getting people there. How many people go to school community partnership here? Yeah, it's good stuff. So. Um, and our last um, committee is our strategic planning committee. So um, this is, we are creating um, in, in uh, collaboration with the Greater Fall River Partners, um, with, with their five-year plan, we are creating our own five-year plan, and our two missions right now um, with that strategic planning are safe places and risk behavior prevention. So um, we're gonna have, we have a committee hard at work, we're building different objectives in terms of meeting those, those specific goals that are, are going on for the committees. Any questions about any of that? That was a lot of information I threw. So at this time, um, Christian's going to come on up and he's going to discuss a little bit more in depth about our violence prevention grants. It seems like I'm going to be doing a lot of thanking this evening. Uh, at this point, I'd like to thank our local delegation um, and thanking Rep Representatives Schmidt, Sylvia, Fiola, as well as Senator Rodericks. Um, Beginning with the, the first year of Shannon in September of 2006 uh, until the present with both the Shannon SSYI grant uh, through the work, the hard work of the local delegation, they have been able to help secure $7.6 million in funding for these two grants. So if we can give them a round of applause because... They're going to be having the fun task of dealing with the budget, not only for these two grants, but all the other uh, funding that's coming down from the state, I believe, this Wednesday. From September 2003 through December 2015, the general trend in aggravated assaults has been downward. The last full year of data, 2015, shows that the yearly total of aggravated assaults, 99, remains low in comparison with 2004, when there are 261 aggravated assaults, the highest total. Well, it's impossible to say that this is a result of the Shannon Initiative and SSYI because so many anti-crime initiatives through the police department and our other law enforcement partners, as well as youth engagement projects. It's a positive indication that youth crime in Fall River is decreasing. The Shannon Grant started in 2006. It's a comprehensive multidisciplinary approach to address gang and youth violence. There are five major prongs. Suppression is the first one. That's our law enforcement partners with the police department, the DA, sheriff, and parole. Um, at this point, I will call up Lieutenant Bernia, who loves to speak almost as much as I do, to talk about uh, the suppression efforts in Florida.
Thank you. <laughs> Very briefly, the, the Fall River Police Department suppression pot is part and parcel with anti-gang patrols, which is over at targeted areas, walking beats, cruiser patrol, bicycle patrol, in areas that have been determined to be hot spots. And hot spots are determined in, in several different ways, uh, neighborhood output, uh, input, uh, statistics that the police department uh, garners throughout the day-to-day -day, uh, issues of crime in the city of Fall River. We did uh, 2,700 hours last year at uh, 321 hot spots, and 40 individuals were arrested on warrants during those, yeah, during those hot spot patrols. We also have done uh, 100 community events, 99 to 101, somewhere in there, of info sharing, uh, et cetera, where we can go one-on-one -on -one with the community people, share ideas, they tell us what they want or what they expect from the police department. These were attended by over 2,500 people throughout the last year. And again, just, on, just so you understand, hotspots are crime data, neighbor concerns, post-crime impact teams where if there's a violent crime such as a shooting, uh, a robbery, something along that line, an aggravated assault, <coughs> the police orders us into the community, into that area, overtly. So we walk those areas, we meet with people, we discuss their concerns, we will lay back and forth what it is that we can do for them and how they can get in touch with us as quickly as possible. We also have uh, two officers who are part of the gang presentation. They go out to the community, to schools, neighborhood groups, social services, religious groups, and they discuss what they are uh, experts at, which is gang recognition, and relaying that information to people so that they can also pick up on the little nuances that gang members have. We also have what is a, has been a great value to the police officers, which is a gang database. It's a great tool for us. Uh, it, it grades gang members by a point system that is recognized by the state of Massachusetts. And it allows us to view them, uh, their associates, and we can put this, this little scheme together in a tree form, if you will, as to who, who belongs with what group, who, who does what, who goes where, where they meet, and so forth and so on. And it's, and it's without doubt, without the Shannon funding, uh, we would definitely not be able to function as we do when it comes to these activities. Thank you. Arresting the individuals, uh, sending, prosecuting them, and sending them to jail is not going to solve all the issues that are out in the community. Uh, the major component of our Shannon Grant is the social intervention opportunities piece. At this point, I'd like to call up Joe Cruz up, who's going to bring us through a scenario. So, so this will be like a day in the life. Tom, not the Beatles song. <laughs> Michael is a 16-year-old male who has been suspended several times from high school for fighting. He subsequently drops out of school. He has been gang involved since middle school and now spends his days hanging with his friends. His only source of income comes from selling drugs. Currently, he lives at home with his mother and his two younger brothers who are starting to go down the same path as Michael. He often comes home late and has been oppositional to mom. He gets arrested for possession of a dangerous weapon and vandalism, gang graffiti. A frustrated judge gives Michael one more chance and gives him a continued without a finding with the stipulation that he gets his life in order and completes 100 hours of community service. His attorney refers him to the outreach program. All right, so after that beautiful scenario that Christian gave us, before I uh, add to that, he asked me to leave my Yankees hat at the table. I didn't want to further discourage any of the Red Sox fans. Mr. Corey, many of those guys. Uh, so basically what would happen is, uh, Michael, who's the name that's mentioned in this scenario, he would be referred down to our office. So we have a bunch of partners, as you guys are all aware, that would refer this individual down to our office. Uh, what would happen first would be the intake assessment. So we receive the referral from the outside agency. Typically we try to touch base with that agency to find out what needed services this individual has, uh, and not just what we're seeing on the sheet of paper on the referral. Um, so they come down to recreation. They go over the referral, 
with our case managers and outreach workers. Um, what I say, they've, they've done a great job of tying these guys in, connecting them to services. Um, so the intake is completed. We look at all the risk factors. We meet with that individual, with the family, find out what needed services they have, um, what they're looking for. Um, when it comes to education, uh, Youth Build does a great job here in the city with edu education if individuals aren't able to get back into regular mainstream school. So Youth Build does, great, uh, does a great job with that. We have the YMCA uh, and the Boys and Girls Club that provide pro-social activities for these individuals as well. And they also help out with employment. Uh, youth Connections, we work great hand-in-hand -hand all the time, uh, constant contact. I uh, probably was a mistake given my personal cell phone number because they're in constant contact with me. Uh, but Youth Connections has done a great job as well with providing these individuals with employment services here in the city as well. Uh, FSA does a great job with its therapeutic mentoring, which is something that I do part-time, um, connecting these individuals with uh, positive role models, also connecting them to needed services in the community as well. Uh, we have Solid Ground that does a therapy with a lot of individuals that come in. Uh, it took a little bit of time to get some of these guys to buy in to help them understand that counseling isn't something that makes you look any, doesn't make you look bad or anything like that. But a lot of these guys just need that person to speak to that's not going to judge them. So that, that's been very helpful as well. Um, we also have a high set program at Recreation as well. Uh, we currently have about 10 to 12 individuals that are involved in our high set program. Those are safe and successful youth initiative kids as well as Shannon kids. And we also have individuals that have come in from the public that aren't involved necessarily with this grant, but they also take part in high set programming. Um, employment is also a big place as well. Like I said, um, it's tough to try to get some of these guys to buy in when you have an individual that's referred in off the street where they're making anywhere around $2,000 to $5,000 in a matter of a couple of days to get them to buy in and tell them, listen, you're going to make $10 an hour, but this is, this is you know, guaranteed work where you don't have to watch you know, behind your back or anything like that. Um, so the job piece is great. We have the job readiness, which is about 20 hours of uh, service, and that is through the signal and success curriculum that we have through Concord. Um, so they go through the 20 hours of training before they're placed at the job site with hopes that they can be placed in unsubsidized employment over a certain amount of time. And like I said, the counseling. We also offer the, uh, the community service as well if there are any individuals that need community service. Uh, a little bit of numbers that we have here from Shannon from 2015. So some of the highlighted Shannon participants, uh, there were 16 funded programs, 189 youth that were serviced, 66 of them were known to be gang involved. Education and employment, there were 34 that were in employment programming, seven obtained uh, unsubsidized employment. Law enforcement and court uh, prosecutions, there were 321 hotspots that were patrolled, uh, 36 arrests made of gang members for were prosecuted, uh, there were 11 stabbing weapons that were seized, 32 Shannon, Shannon youth held on dangerousness hearings, personal development, there were 84 that received case management, 101 participated in youth development programming, um, as far as community mobilization, five graffiti removals, and there were 122 uh, community meetings that were held. That sums it up. Any Thank questions? You. And now the, the best part of these presentations, instead of the adults talking about uh, the, these figures, you'll be able to hear some testimony from the youth directly impacted. Uh, who would like to go first? We have Nayel and Dylan who took time to be here today. Uh, so you guys can rock paper scissors shoot. In the buddy system. In the buddy system, so you both can come up. All right. Thank you guys. Before the Shannon program, I was hanging with the wrong people and I was making bad choices and getting myself in trouble in school. My brother I was also part of the program, which was called the SAFE program, and that introduced me to the staff and the program. I was interested in the services they had to offer and was excited to be accepted and involved in Shannon. Shannon provided me with an outreach worker, June and Vicky who called and checks on, in on me. I have had a few outreach workers who have contributed to my success. I have a Boys and Girls Club membership and a YMCA membership. I have taken part in a few partnership projects like Youth Corps and CD Rec. And I have volunteered 
with the uh, with Shannon program at parks and parade events. My grades have gone up. I started at RMS, which is a middle school. I don't know if you know. And made my way through RPS. And now I have half days at Durfee. I will be a full-time Durfee student after April vacation. Before the Shannon program, I was getting in trouble at school, and I got arrested a few times, and I was doing bad things. But now that I'm in the program, I'm doing a lot more. I'm getting out of the house and staying out of trouble. We're in the process of getting me back into school and trying to get me a summer job through the Youth Connections. I currently have a mentor, uh, Christian. <coughs> who I like to go spend time with. Uh, I received the Boys and Girls Club membership, and I wish we had a basketball gym at the CD Rec, but I think that that would keep you know, the kids out of trouble because they like to play basketball. And um, my outreach worker is June, and she always offers help, Gives me a lot. <laughs> uh, I recommend this program to every kid who is going to that. With the Shannon Grant, uh, just the funded partners won't be able to do it alone. Uh, we need to work on community mobilization and organizational change. At this point, I'd like to invite Wendy Garflip up to speak about the Peace by Peace Summer, uh, our biggest event of the year. Hi everyone, I'm gonna speak about two things that we're doing. So first, we're doing a series of guided and facilitated conversations with our youth about racism. We'll start with the preconceived notions that we all carry and the way these notions impact on our behavior. We're going to be talking about implicit bias and microaggression. So implicit bias is the unintentional thoughts that you have about a particular person. For example, if you were to think that all youth in Fall River are prone to violence because you've experienced some youth that have violence, that would be implicit bias. Microaggression is the behaviors we have that relate to that. For example, if you're walking down the street and you see a bunch of kids standing on the corner and you cross to the other side, that's microaggression. Or if you're walking and you see a person of color and you grab your pocketbook, that's microaggression. So we have shown that the connection between microaggression and behavior can lead to community violence. So it's important that we have an opportunity to talk about it and educate the kids about it and be able to identify which are the implicit biases that we all hold and what's the microaggression that we're dealing with. In addition to these conversations, we'll be once again convening the Peace by Peace Summit. It'll take place Thursday night, May 26, right here in this room for all of you, for anybody who's working with youth and we'll have a wonderful dinner for you, so we'll encourage you to come. And the facilitator from our program the next day will be here leading the charge. And May 27th, right here in the Boys and Girls Club in the gym from 10 to 2, will be the Peace by Peace Summit. We've engaged Learning for Living's Breaking Down the Walls presentation. Breaking Down the Walls is a comprehensive program designed to unify, empower, and engage youth to create a positive and supportive community. These groundbreaking techniques help open doors, reveal truths that immediately stimulate self-reflection and community building. Our youth will learn to interact with a cross-section of their peers and find that they don't live in isolation, rather that they live in a community that depends on each of its members to thrive. Youth will work side by side, learning from one another, and become active participants in the positive developments of their communities. Breaking down the wall, subject matter and activities have been created to serve a broad vision of a positive, healthy climate. This is a violence prevention program teaching youth crucial communications and listening skills 
to help navigate times of question or conflict. If you've never heard of it before, go online and look at this a seven minute video called Breaking Down the Walls. So we're gonna need a lot of support because we need one adult for every eight kids and we're anticipating about 200 kids participating. So if you'd like to be one of the caring adults that comes and helps us on May 27th, please let me know. We hope to see you all 6 p.m. May 26th, right in this room for dinner. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, spoiler alert, you will be challenged to make a pledge on what you will do to contribute to making Florida a more peaceful community. So now's the time to sneak out that back door. <laughs> uh, Shannon is our longest running grant, but it's not, only, not our only grant. At this point, I'd like to call up Ray Gove to talk about the Safe and Successful Youth Initiative. <clears throat> I'd like to go over some uh, data with the SSYI program. Last year, 2015, we identified 133 uh, potential participants. Out of those 133 identified, we had face-to-face -face contact with 115. Out of the 115, we enrolled them in the program. What that means when we enrolled them, we put them in a work readiness program, we offer them health care and counseling, we offer them education, and subsidized employment leading to unsubsidized employment. Out of the 29 enrolled, 20 of them went to subsidized employment after that, and then uh, 11 of those went to unsubsidized employment for 2015. For this year now, for 2016, we're, it's a little different now. The police department qualifies the SSYI participants. When I say qualify, they have to be through the ages of 17 through 24, and they have to meet some type of gang activity, a victim of violence, perpetrator of violence, and uh, youth that are in need. At this point, for 2016, we've identified 137 have been identified and qualified through Fall River Police Department. Out of that 137, at this point, 43 have had face-to-face -face contacts, and right now we have 18 enrolled. We're offering them right now education, health care and counseling again, and employment. We're doing work readiness through the Workforce Investment Board, Youth Connections, we do it at a site also for recreation. We have a, a class by DPH also. And what I'd like to bring up next is one of our former participants. He was a participant and then he was hired as a staff member for the new grant. I'd like to welcome Hakeem Otis Stevenson. today. <laughs> My name is Hakeem Otis Stevenson. I was born in New Jersey, Bushy, New Jersey. Um, I moved to Fall River, age of about, about five, six. Um, I've been here ever since. Um, as you know, I grew up in the community and um, I was a local gang member, but I'm not anymore. Um, I had a lot of history and um, communication with rival gang members and a lot of affiliation at one point in my life, but today I don't. Um, it, it feels good to, you know, make a change in my life and be different, you know. Um, I've been through some things in my life. I mean, I've been stabbed, I've been shot, I've been, I've been in jail. I, I didn't do things that I didn't want to do, you know. I'm, very, I'm not proud of them at all, you know. Um, that's why I'm trying to make a change today in my life, you know. Um, I, I, my mom using drugs, pops not around. I, I felt like I didn't have the, the love in the household, so I went in the community, I looked for it, which I did the wrong thing. I looked for love that wasn't, you know, really love. It was at that it was in the household the whole time, you know. Um, so I made a big mistake. I looked for love in the community. Joined the gang. It made me feel good at first. I felt real good, you know. Um, it made me feel wanted, I, I felt accepted. You know, um, I started doing things that I didn't want to do. Didn't really know the consequences of these things. I just was doing it because I wanted to be a part of something. You know, um, as time went by, I started to realize as I got older that 
I didn't make the smartest decision, you know. Um, and it took for a lot of things to go, you know, for me to get incarcerated, me being in that place, you know, all these people that I was doing this and that and, and the third floor, they wasn't there when I really needed them. The only person that was there was my mother, you know, um, family, you know, and I realized how much that it was a joke the whole time, you know. Um, so I want to apologize to my community for all uh, making mistakes in this community. That's why I'm here today to make a change, to do something different. You know, um, I've been to local schools, I've been to Durfee, I've been to RPS, I've been trying to get back to the community, talk to these kids and tell them that this gang stuff ain't what it is. It's the last thing you want to do, you know. Um, it's not worth it. I learned the hard way, I, I know, you know, and I'm trying to share with these, these younger kids because some of these younger kids are in a position that I was in at a young age. I thought it was cool. And I liked it and people made me feel like, you know, I can live a life off of this and, you know, it wasn't worth it at the end. I don't want to see our young youth go through the same thing I went through, you know. Um, I don't want to see them take the same mistakes and follow my same footsteps, you know. It's, I'm proud of Niel, okay, that's Niel Pius, I knew him since he was born. It's, I knew him since he was in his mother's stomach, you know. So um, I want to apologize to you for setting a bad example for you too. You know, you was my neighbor. He looked up to me that young age when he was a little young. I'm pretty sure he threw. Well, today, I want you to look up at me as doing good things like this, not out there. You know, because it's not worth it, and it won't get you nowhere. You lose people you love. You know that, right? It ain't worth it. You know, um, I don't mean to talk you out. I just, you know, I want to apologize to you. I have set a bad example for you. You have looked up at me, you know, when you're younger, you know, and I'm, and I'm glad you're making a smarter decision today, you know, that this is what it's all about. This is life, doing the right thing, you know. Um, so, you know, I want to thank Ray. This man right here had been on my side supporting me, showing me the way, helping me, guiding me, showing me the better way of doing things, like getting up and going to work like a young man, you know what I'm saying? Um, going in the house at a, a decent time, waking up and doing something presentable with myself instead of hanging in the streets 24-7, you know? I, um, right now, I'm trying to go get my high set. I'm in the high set trying to get my GED. I'm 25 years old. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, it's, it's sad. It's, it's, it's sad, you know? But I'm not gonna beat myself up too much. I'm just gonna do what I gotta do now about it, you know? Um, so I'm trying to get my GED, and you know, once I get it, I plan to go to BCC, or maybe get a trade and do something different. I know I won't be gang gang. That's the last thing I'm gonna be doing. <laughs> um, I want to thank Joey the Cruz. He's been by my side too. He's the guy, he's the reason why I know what I know. This man right here and this man right here. You know, they the reason why I know what I know today. And, and, and I'm going about it in the, at the best of my ability. I'm not perfect, you know, but I strive to, to be. You know what I'm saying? It's not wrong with striving to be. You know, um, I'm just doing so much better with myself today, you know. Um, I've been going through some things myself in my life, you know, where doing good things and giving back to the community has helped me in many ways, you know. The high set class, I go home, I got, a, I got a newborn on the way, you know what I'm saying? She can hear already. I can start reading books and stuff like that too. And all I want to do is just be a good father. I got two little girls and they need me. More than anything, they need me, you know? And I don't want them to look up and say, Daddy's a gangbanger. And Daddy's in jail, Daddy ain't doing nothing. It ain't going to be that type of ball game at all, you know? Um, I just want to thank everybody, you know? Um, I've been, I've been through it, like I said, I'm, I'm telling my story. Everybody in this room got a story to tell, you know what I'm saying? I want to thank you guys for listening to my story, I'm under one man, you know what I'm saying? But um, it hasn't been easy, it hasn't been easy at all. But it ain't that hard either. I realize it's not that hard, you just got to get up and do it. You got to push yourself, motivate yourself, you know? I got people that call me every day, what's up? Come hang out with me. We brand new now. Now, I just want to do something different with myself because that didn't get me nowhere, you know? And they don't care. They want to see me in the same position as them. I'm not trying to be there no more. I didn't have enough. I didn't have enough. 
If I was lying to you, God, I wouldn't be here today. Trust me, I would be in the streets doing the same thing, same activities, trying to make a change. And I'm not doing this by myself, and you guys ain't got to do it by yourself, because I'm here and I'm with you, God. So I have to say. Shannon Safe Bridge are on the further end of the continuum of care. Now we'll call up Anne Marie Holly to talk about the DPH grant. Well, Hakeem is a very tough act to follow. <laughs> um, so my name is Anne Marie Holly, and like I said, I'm the Youth Leadership Specialist at Greater Fall River Recreation, and my position is funded completely through the Department of Public Health Youth Violence Prevention Grant. Um, as you can see, the SSYI and Shannon Grants have big teams working on them, and um, for DPH, I am a party of one. So I do as best as I can in the community. Um, I'm so thankful that I have the Shannon and the SSYI right in our building, so I'm able to kind of tap into their re resources, and we definitely partner on a lot of things. I've had Hakeem coming into some of the groups that I run in Durfee to speak with them. Um, so it's been a really great partnership among the youth violence prevention grants. Uh, my main focus in what I do is actually trying to target more so young women because the Shannon and SSYI focus mainly on young men. I thought that the young women in the community also needed um, some support and education around making healthy decisions. So I work with fourth through 12th graders in the Fall River, Fall River public school system and I do healthy relationship classes. So mainly it's um, all girls and we talk about social emotional learning, social skills, leadership skills, teamwork, how to identify what's a healthy relationship, what's an unhealthy relationship in your life, um, self-confidence. Uh, I have a leadership group that I work with at Durfee High School called the Youth Leadership Council. We focus a lot on community service and volunteerism. Um, so I'm kind of everywhere. You won't find me in my office very often, um, but this year so far since September, um, I've done nearly 120 programs in the schools, serving over 90 youth. Um, I did have an all-male group that I worked with at Morton Middle School that was focusing on self-confidence and respect, um, as well as uh, my fourth, grader, fourth and fifth graders at Tansy Elementary, which focuses on social skills. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been great. I've, I've had such a great opportunity to meet fabulous young women, and I have one of them here today, Morgan Abrantes, and she is here um, as one of my Talbot students that I have on Thursday mornings, and she is just an all-star leader. We talk about some really, really heavy topics during those classes, and she always pushes herself to kind of be the person to speak up if nobody is speaking up, and it's just been a great role model. So, Morgan, if you'd like to come up here. I've been in Anne Marie's class for about more than three months, and it's been a learning experience for me. Um, being in this class has helped me to build a stronger, safer relationship and friendships. For example, in our first class, Anne Marie had us participate in an activity where we had to cross the line if any of the statements she was reading applied to us. This helped us to get to, to, get to know our fellow classmates on another level. I felt safe being in Anne Marie's class because we talked about stuff that would help us with relationships and you know how to keep it safer. Stay away from violence and 